Yes. Yes. See how that works? Now, Hoya Locker Room, episode 57. Uh, do we have Chris Wright? Did Chris Wright get back in? Okay, Not Chris yet. He did now. Hit him. Hoya Locker Room, episode 57. This is our Twitter episode. We're getting off to a rocky start, which is commonplace here on Hoya Locker Room. I do want to apologize. I do want to thank everybody for taking time out on their Sunday to do what I think is the most important show as it relates to our Hoyas. Um, I'm thrown off a little bit, but I just want to start by just kind of giving everybody a shout out and the reason why you're here from, from, from our point of view. Um, I'll start with Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie, uh, sports management graduate of the uh, Masters of Public Administration from Georgetown, 2012, and then 2010, SUNY Brockport. I think you did a sports journalism deal. Mm -hmm. but most importantly, she is um, administrator of the Big East uh, family uh, page on uh, Facebook. And they carry over 2,000 uh, Hoya fans running. They're the true definition of DIE. Um, because we got everything from crazy uncles to crazy, crazy grandfathers to people who are die hard about the program. Um, and Stephanie, if you want to add to that, when, when, when you get your chance to chop, please do. Uh, Super Eric Rogers, I've been following him on Twitter for a minute. Um, always in the field, stays really locked in when it's on the youth up and coming. Um, I, I appreciate his perspective. I'd, I'd like to hear why, how, why and how he became a Hoya fan because we missed you on the first annual Twitter show last year. Super Eric Rogers. Aiden Curran writes for the Hilltop Hoops, one of my favorite um, uh, mags to follow. Um, I think they give a perspective that's unique and also very challenging um, when it comes to the program. And I want to thank you for coming back again because it had been very easy for you not to come back again. Um, George Barnett, award-winning uh, writer. Um, his perspective is spot on. Um, he talks about the relationship between the program and Chocolate City or what used to be Chocolate City in DC. I think that point of view has not necessarily been lost, but it's just one of those things where I think that's, that's a trademark of the program and that's something we should talk about. Markham Stansbury, you know, uh, Nathan Chin, voice of, um, uh, is it men's and women's soccer now? Uh, it's mostly been women's soccer, but I run some of, of the public address. Soccer. Started off a young pup, writing for the Village Voice. Uh, he's, he's a veteran now because we accelerate things. So you're not going last this time. Um, and then Patrick Waring. Uh, Patrick Waring, I, I think out of all of us, is probably the one that's most dialed in, and Aiden as well. But they've actually had a conversation with Coach Ewing as it relates to the Hoyas in terms of questioning him uh, during the season and during games. He also uh, is a member of the MBS uh, Hour podcast with Joe Cardoza. And in terms of Hoya video, they, might, they may be better than at Georgetown Hoops because of the amount of time and effort they put into uh, talking about our current and former players, and mostly former. Um, I, I think needs to be celebrated and definitely a salute. Mark Guerrero, who I did not think was going to show. Um, he's president of our Hoya Hoop Club, uh, probably the most official person on, on, on the panel today. Um, I'm the oldest, um, but he's the most official. And Mark, I want to thank you. And I know you have to leave early. Dude. So we'll probably be starting with you. So anything you want to add to the intro I gave you, feel free. Um, but the the backdrop of this is a 2021 season preview, as, as best we can get into that, but also um, how you see the program evolving from a communication standpoint, particularly with NIL being a part of the mix. And I know that's a mouthful, and you can take portions of that 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 backdrop. And we, I just want to get everybody involved. We'd like for this to be less than an hour, but I think that's pretty impossible. So. Um, Welcome again to everyone, and Mark, we'll start with you. Okay, well, Gene, thanks, Mark, and thank you, and it's great to be on with all of you guys. Uh, appreciate you all doing it and all that you all do collectively to support Georgetown basketball. Uh, it obviously means a ton. I know several let of you- me just, hold on. Let me just interrupt real quick. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mark Guerrero's all-time power <laughs> forward at Georgetown is David Wingate. That, that that has to be said. 
David Wingate is his all-time power forward. Well, well, <laughs> that in, I just want to throw in, is that a sleeveless t-shirt uh, or is that a short sleeve t-shirt? That is that is sleeveless. And I and I went in, I'm glad you noticed that because I went and changed because I was looking too similar to you. I, I, I didn't want anybody to think we coordinated on wardrobes. All right. Do you have do you have the guns to support that, Markham? <laughs> Okay, maybe, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a contest. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could go back to the starting five. That's fine, Markham. You're you had me playing small ball, so I'm still I'm still happy with my lineup. I'm good with it. Um, yeah, look, it, as I was saying, I know a lot of you personally. I don't know all of you personally. I look forward to the opportunity to have that uh, that chance. Hopefully, this season when we're all back at games. Um, yeah, I'm obviously looking forward to the season. Um, you're going to see a lot starting to roll out from the hoop club. We're doing, there's going to be a, um, a preseason preview that's going to be announced. I believe it's coming out this week. So you'll see that, um, coming your way. It's going to be in early November. Um, coach Ewing's also doing an event next week with some of our, uh, larger donors. If you see like the benefits for the hoop club donors that 15 grand and above do, have typically have a dinner with Coach Ewing and Athletic Director Lee Reed. Um, they're doing a virtual event now, and then there'll be a dinner in the in the spring. But um, starting to roll back to obviously more normal, more normal uh, activities. Um, but there's still restrictions on campus with COVID that leading to some of these things still being still being virtual. But um, I'm excited about the season. I'm excited about the team. Obviously, a lot of newcomers, and I think you know there's a lot. That, a lot that they're all going to have to offer. I think you're going to see a lot of the new guys playing a lot of minutes, and um, I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to ask questions, and since Mark has to, to jet, I think anyone and everyone should feel free to have a question for him. And, and my question for him, um, and without cutting to the chase, and you're smiling already, um, how is a program um, do you think we're building and learning um, in this current marketplace where players are shifting and leaving? Um, because again, it's not something that's specific to Georgetown. What is specific to Georgetown is how we to share that intel. And again, me being the oldest person on the call, I'm the most used to that style of conducting business. So for me, it, it's, not, it's not a strange thing, but as we move forward and the game has evolved, how do you think we're situated to deal with these scenarios and how, what are some best practices we can put forward? I know that's a mouthful, but. Yeah, you know, look, it's the reality of college basketball now. Um, so yeah, every program is dealing with it. Every program is seeing guys come and go. Um, Coach Ewing's done a great job on the transfer market. You know, he's gotten a lot of good guys in. Um, it's, NIL is obviously going to play, continue to play a huge role in this. Um, you're going to see, I think it having an increasing role in the springtime as guys look to transfer, you know, whatever schools, uh, Georgetown certainly, um, focused on all those issues. Um, I did speak with coach Ewing last week and I know he's very focused on that and the, you know, what it's going to take to, to remain competitive recruiting. Um, certainly it, there's, there's a lot that's changing. Um, Georgetown's always going to be playing by the rules. Uh, which is critical. And that's one of the reasons that makes us who we are. Um, obviously some of our competition does not, but uh, that's, that's just the reality of college sports, but um, Georgetown um, it, you know, and coach Ewing and the entire staff are very actively involved, obviously nonstop in recruiting. I mean, you guys all follow recruiting probably closer than I do. And you all see where they are and how active they are all the time. Um, obviously we don't get everybody that we're reaching out to, but I, he's been, I think a very effective recruiter and continues to improve uh, and is getting better and better. And you see that in this year's talent level, um, this freshman class, and that's, that's here now. And, you know, obviously the start of next year with uh, Denver England, and, you know, we'll see where we go from there. You're on mute, Gene. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm, coming. Uh, I'm going to jump to Patrick Waring. Um, Patrick, not necessarily picking back and off of any of Mark's questions, but if you have any questions for Mark, feel free. But again, I just want to give you a salute for your body of work last season. Also, if you can touch on um, what it's like covering the Hoyas, 
your challenges, your successes. Um, I do want to highlight some conversations that you and I had as it related to speaking to Coach Ewing, and I think you've developed a, a nice little flow with him. So if you can touch on that, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, man. Well, first I want to, I just want to start by saying thank you, you know, for being able to, uh, to join you guys. So I know I wasn't able to join the last one, but, uh, you know, I definitely want to say, I appreciate being here. Uh, and I appreciate everybody, you know, for the support that I've received different people. I know I've met Stephanie in person, um, section 104 at cat one. We hold it down over there. The best section in the building, hands down. Don't come for me, Eric, because I know you're about to say something, too. And Mark, man, I've been having to meet. Uh, I met Mark in person, um, been able to be around him quite a few times. Um, I do want to thank Mark, too, because when I first met Mark, Mark's the only reason why I was able to go on the Hoya Hoop Club bus trip, because I was late. And uh, Mark held the bus up for me so I could get there. So thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. We were late without you, Patrick. You're too uh <laughs> But now nah, I just want to, like I said, just, just want to thank everybody. Um, and like I said, I appreciate everything. And, you know, I, I you know, I had fun last year um, being able to do some things. I think uh, being virtual actually helped me last year just because of what I do during the day. And because of my schedule, it, you know, being virtual was, you know, was a blessing for me. So if anything came good out of everything we've been through, in the world, I think, being, you know, being virtual and, and, and doing different stuff like that really helped a lot. So uh, I learned a lot, man. I had fun. Uh, I was able to uh, interact with people. So I loved it, man. And uh, I'm just looking forward to, you know, going forward, just try, trying to do more things um, to cover the program. And like I said, I mean, that's about it on that, you know, on that part. I'm going to stay with you for a second because I'm not going to let you off the hook that because if I go to Aiden, I, I know Aiden comes with coming with fire. Now if I go, <laughs> I know George is coming with fire. So I'm going to stay with you for a second. What was child? What was the most challenging thing for you in covering the team? And if anything, um, how can you see it improving or how can you continue to hone in, which which I think you've been able to do with the program? Uh, I think just because. I hadn't experienced anything before covering the team like that. So uh, I, I'm not necessarily going to say I had any challenges. I mean, I would guess not being able to see people face to face would have been the biggest thing, maybe to be able to pull someone to the side and talk to them one on one. So probably that. But I mean, like I said, I, you know, I took advantage of the virtual part. Um, I really took advantage of it. I mean, it's a lot easier to be home or to be able to get to a computer and click on to be able to join them versus driving to the school traffic and all that type stuff. So I think just from what I know, um, I wouldn't necessarily say I had any challenges yet. I mean, other guys can probably speak to that more because they've been in that situation. Um, but I mean, I, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, I try to take full advantage of it. And um, so challenges, I'm not, I'm not really for sure, you know, about that part. I guess it doesn't apply to me yet. I guess I, I should say. Okay, I appreciate I appreciate that that honesty. So with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna before I before I get into some heat, um, I'm going to uh, go to Stephanie Rockwood. And Stephanie, I, I'd like to obviously highlight the work um, that's being done on Facebook uh, by by the Big East family. Um, if you could speak to that, um, um, you know, the positive and the negative. Um, and do you think there'll ever be a point in time where you guys are, are connected with the university in some way? Um, so positives, obviously, with the help of everyone here, um, I usually try to grab as much as possible off of you guys' Twitter feed and post them in our Facebook group. Um, I try to make sure that we're as connected as possible because a lot of the people there only have Facebook. So when stuff blows up on Twitter, they have no idea. Like we, I, we were the first ones to share all the Trey stuff when it happened because none of them had a clue what was going on. And the second I saw it, the second other people saw it, we shared it. And then, you know, of course that went haywire. Um, negatives, obviously, 
there's no control. <laughs> Everyone kind of says what they want to say. And um, when we try to put a little control, then everyone's like, oh, no, you can't stop us from saying what we want to say. Yeah, but to a certain extent, like you said earlier, we have family members in the group of current and former players. We have current and former players in the group. We have an NBA Hall of Famer in the group. Like, it's we're large, but at the same time, we're very tight-knit. So when stuff is said, you have to think, like, other people are going to see this. Eventually, it's going to get out. And, I mean, I know these kids know that we're talking about them. They have to. They'd be stupid not to. So, um, so yeah, the negatives are definitely that people don't understand how far-reaching we've become, especially with 2,000 members plus. So, um, so, yeah, the hardest part is corralling everybody, I think. Well, I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm going to come back and, and, and get into that a little bit more. I want to jump to Aiden now. Um, I remember Aiden and I having a conversation about um, um, him starting or branching off into this new blog or new podcast you have with Hilltop Hoops. And I got to applaud you, salute you. You guys are doing a great job. Also, I want to start on a, on a note with some levity. Um the event that took place at Villanova's rally with <laughs> with the Georgetown guy um, actually asking a Dante Harris question uh, took me back. And maybe Mark Guerrero will be the only one to, to know this story. Um, the guy who wrote The Exorcist was a Georgetown graduate, William Peter Blatty. Uh, Blatty, I think his name is. And if I, I apologize to the family if I'm not saying his name correctly. Um, but there was a story once told where he um, stole the Villanova's mascot and he brought it on Georgetown's campus. That's just gangster. And so what your guy did, Aiden, and you guys reported it to me was the, was the just drew me back to that. So the more, the more we, we change, the more the more the, you know, things change, the more it just rhymes. The more history changes, it just rhymes. So I want to give you a shout out for that. But I just want to bring you in because you guys are pretty, pretty, I don't even know what that is. You guys are pretty thorough. That um, is William Peter Blatty's Oscar for The Exorcist. OK, there we go. <laughs> Mark, I'm always bringing the quality content. Um, but Aiden, I'd like for you to touch on um, um, how you see the program in terms of communicating, why you think Hilltop Hoops is, to me, is in a class by itself, because we just don't have many, too many out there that are saying what you're saying, why you think you, you matter. And uh, again, thank you for coming back for a second time. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me and, and nice to join everyone else on here. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, I, I, I love covering the team with Hilltop Hoops, um, formerly Hoyas 24-7. I think, you know, it's a, it's a small space. Um, so there's, there's some room for um, voices like myself and other voices on here to speak up and, um, you know, help, you know, promote the Georgetown brand, help cover the team, help cover the university. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to do it. I love doing it. Um, in terms of, you know, coverage of the team and, and how I see the team's communication, um, I, I was interested to hear from Patrick about, you know, what, what he thought, um, you know, last year was like covering the team virtually because I've been doing it. So I was a freshman at Georgetown uh, back in 2014. And it, it was, it was, it was more difficult for me, I think, cause I've, I've been, I've, I've covered the team in person before. Um, and I think for a program like Georgetown, who isn't, uh, the most embracing of media relations, um, it, it kind of, it kind of gives another layer of separation between the team and the fan base, um, going all virtual, obviously they had to go virtual. So I'm not criticizing that choice, but you know, it, it was tougher to cover the team virtually. Um, just like it was tough to cover any team virtually. So I'm looking forward to hopefully being back in person this season and, and being able to bring better coverage of the team um, to, our, to our readers and our followers. Um, I think in terms of, you know, how the team is communicating, and I mean, I, I think the Georgetown brand, there's so much to offer. I think we all agree on that. Um, and, you know, obviously my, my, my thoughts on 
Georgetown's, you know, communication, their outreach to the fans and the alums is, is pretty well known. Um, and I do think they can do better. And I, I think, um, you know, I hold them to a high standard and I think there's room for improvement. Um, so hoping to see, you know, hoping to see that improve uh, this season and move forward. Um, you know, I was encouraged with the, the new NIL program that was released a couple, a couple weeks ago. I think that's a, a step in the right direction. Um, I'm, I'm eager to see what comes out of that. Um, you know, hearing Mark talk about his conversation with uh, Coach Ewing about NIL, you know, that's, it's, it's exciting to hear and it'll be interesting to see, you know, how Georgetown leverages that to provide new opportunities um, for its student athletes. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, I think, I, I think back to last year, um, my good friend George on here, you know, his big tagline was this, this program, this team loves to make everything harder than it needs to be. Uh, and I think a year later, I think we're still kind of stuck in that with that motto. I think they're still making things harder than they need to be. Um, and, you know, obviously there's tons of people around the program, in the program who are willing to help. And, um, you know, Chris Wright being number one, I think, you know, what he and Austin have done um, really matters. And I would love to see the program embrace them more than they have. Um, so I, I, I think my biggest thing, um, you know, moving forward this season, this year would be just to see the program, you know, use some of that help that is being offered to them. I know Nathan is, has joined the university now and is doing great work. So I think, I think that's awesome. Uh, and I'd love to see them continue to use um, that help. So I'm encouraged, but I think there's still, uh, still some work to do. Appreciate that, Aiden. That was, a, that was the calmer, uh, more mild sauce of Aiden. Um, George, he kind of he kind of pulled you in real quick. So uh, the the tagline was, was serious, and I, and I and I repeated it myself as well. Uh, making things harder than it has to be. I'd like to know um, what you're looking forward to as it come, as the new season starting. I'd like to know your point of view on the way things are currently, um, and any other musings you have that are going on right now. I'm looking, <clears throat> obviously, I, I am looking forward to the season. Um, new season always brings new oppor uh, opportunities, new possibilities. Um, but the thing that's sticking out in my head right now is, right now we're kind of concerned with the same things we were concerned with last year when we had the same conversation, uh, talking about the same things as far as communication goes. And after the team won the Big East Championship and went to the first tournament since 2015, that's what we're going into the season talking about. So. That's the most frustrating part for me right now. Obviously, the NIL thing, I was, I was very happy to see that they had a plan in place. Um, I actually have a question for Mark about that as well. Um, but looking forward to the season. Um, hopefully, hopefully, someday soon, um, we can get this communication thing worked out. Um, it's in 2021, it, it's an issue. Um, the world has changed. It's not the 1980s anymore. Uh, these kids have their own social media presence. Um, you have to embrace that. Um, you have to embrace that on all the platforms. Um, it could, it could, it's an easy fix, even if you just give Coach Crouch the Twitter feed and the Instagram feed. It would, that would alleviate a lot of our issues right there because of the way he's so active. Um, but going back to my question for Mark, um, you said you had a conversation with coach about NIL. Has there been sort of a, a directive for what the hoop club can and cannot do um, in terms of uh, NIL and how you can help the program in that way? Yeah, so my understanding is, well, first, first and foremost, university employees cannot be involved in arranging for opportunities for student athletes. So um, it has to be independent of the university. So the hoop club itself um, as an entity is not, will not be involved in, in arranging opportunities either because, you know, we're technically could be considered to be part of the athletic department, but that doesn't mean that individuals cannot be involved in helping with those efforts. Um, so, you know, I've been following a lot of what a lot of schools alums are doing and fans of, of a lot of different schools and seeing what's happening. And I could just let you know that, there's a lot of activity uh, regarding NIL opportunities uh, for the Georgetown team, um, for the guys. So there's there's a lot that's going on. And 
in the very near future, you'll be seeing more of that um, coming out, um, but it's still in the works, but there's a lot that's going on. Um, Nathan, I promise you, you wouldn't be last. Um, I think Aiden said some really cool things about you that I agree with. Um, you were a little pup this time last year, and I think you raised your game. I think your entry, if you guys haven't had a chance to read the piece that Nathan did that I consider like a legacy history pride piece on the program, um, maybe he can share it all with you. But I, it was like a four-part series. Am I not correct, Nathan? It's a four-part yep. series that was very well done. So um, I want to thank you for that again. But the fact that you've elevated now and you've moved on and you're doing something with women's soccer, um, I'd like to kind of direct something to you in terms of as you look across the hilltop and if you look at other sports, how you think the basketball program is faring and which which sports would you point to as, OK, they're kind of leading the way in terms of activity, in terms of communicating, because the basketball following, I think, is challenging in and of itself because it's so diverse. And I think if you just look at the people that are on this panel, there's diversity in that, but we still have common denominators that I think we should activate and take advantage of. But from your perspective, being on the hilltop, um, just speak to some of those things that um, that I mentioned. Yeah, definitely. Um, first of all, just wanted to thank you, Gene and Markham as well for having me back. Um, obviously, uh, this is a this is a very esteemed panel and uh, honored to be a part of it. Um, yeah, as far as uh, other sports on the hilltop, uh, when it comes to communication, um, it, it's it's just as tough. I think some one of the one of the sports that does a really good job sort of uh, celebrating and promoting its alums a lot is men's soccer. And you could kind of see that you can see that in their promotional materials. They had uh, many of the alumni back uh, this weekend for, for the reunion and uh, their results really speak for themselves uh, uh, on the, on the pitch. And so I think men's soccer does a really good job with their communications, but also I will say that, um, in the in the athletics office that we have right now, um, it's been a it's been a pretty challenging year. We've had some turnover. Um, the staff is not quite as is not quite as big or quite as experienced as you would like it to be, um, given the given the ambitions that we have and given uh, what Georgetown basketball has historically meant. Uh, so it it has been a challenge um, to to try and keep that communication up, uh, try and produce content. And so uh, definitely, definitely hear everyone's concerns. And I, I would love to hear uh, a lot of, a lot of different thoughts on what we could do better uh, because, because ultimately the people here are the, are the ones who have sort of the best interests of the university, the athletes in mind. And so, um, yeah, I, I would say that any and all suggestions are are welcome to me at the very least, and I could I could try and do my part. So I definitely want to table the suggestion joint um, because I think that's that's really what I'd like to hear um, from everyone uh, that's on the panel. Um, but I want to bring in Chris Wright because I want to thank Chris um, for coming through. Um, Chris had a game tonight; they won. Chris had a 24-point, four rebound, six assist uh, effort. If I got the numbers wrong, you know, I'm stuck on the 24 points because you're still getting 24 points in your – in your 25. In your, 25. Oh, I had, no, no, I had five rebounds and I had one block today too. Chris Wright with a block? <laughs> what? Paint. So uh, I want to – You're thank, looking at my big little man tape. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I want to thank you for coming through because um, I want to also second what you talked about with dog talk. I mean, I'd much rather uh, listen to dog talk than Hoy Locker Room. Um, I just think that the energy there is, is vastly different. But again, it speaks to, I think, the diversity of what we can offer in terms of, you know, resources toward the university and pulling in uh, different groups of, of people. But Chris, I'd love for you to chime in. Um, because again, you're you're our pro Hoya, and I'm glad I have Nathan on and I have you on at the same time. Because I would love for us both to 
both groups to start to think about maybe a pro Hoya segment, uh, whether we do it on Hoya Locker Room or whether we do it on Dog Talk or whether we do it on Hilltop Hoops or whether we do it on MBS Sports Hour. It's just something that, again, we can do this ourselves um, because, again, uh, you know, we know what the program, how the program is situated. Um, and, you know, I just want, again, that's something I want to table for a conversation if we have time to get into. But, Chris, I want, just, want you to speak to the advent of dog talk, where you think we are in the communication piece, and also just touch on what it's like to be a pro Hoya. Uh, yeah, thank you, Gene. First of all, I just want to say um, thanks for everybody that jumped on here. This is a great group right here. There's a lot of people that are really trying to do some great things for the community. Mark, nice to see you. Mark, I'm nice to see you. Aiden, thanks for the shout out. Patrick, I look at your stuff all the time. I even, I think I hit you up one time about your content. Stephanie, you know, we've been, we've been, we've had a connection for a long time now. So uh, Eric and, and and George, you know, it's it's all love between everybody. So, um, I mean, me personally being a former Hoya, playing for the Hoyas and, and kind of being the, the liaison between the young and the old, uh, it's just, it's hard to understand why we just don't do simple things when it comes to media relations, um, like, I just don't get it, man. It's, it's, we can do so much more on a very simple level in terms of how we can communicate, how we can be showing these kids off, how we can be showing the program off. We have a lot of history that we don't show. You know, like, I'm gonna be honest, I forgot that we won a championship last, like, you know, the Big East title. And then I was like, oh shit, we did win the Big East title just recently, you know what I'm saying? We did win the last Big East title. We are tied or, you know, in first place for most, most Big East titles in the history of the Big East, you know. Um, so I just think it just needs to be more. It needs to be a concentrated effort on us uh, putting more content out there, being more personable uh, and just really showing our charisma, showing our personality as a university. Our, our social media is is lacking in those areas, you know, our social media. We don't I show these kids and walk on campus, show these kids what they do, going to old Donovan, you know, you know, whatever they doing, just show them their everyday lifestyle, not just them, you know, in the gym, getting up a couple of shots. It's, it's a lot more than that from as a student athlete. Um, so I think that's something that's obviously missing. You know, we've been touching on that, obviously. Everyone's been touching on that and speaking on that. Um, but I just think that it's, 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 it's a necessity at this point. How can we recruit kids? You know, how can we get kids to stay at the school? How can we get people to want to come to Georgetown? You know, a lot of people are getting recruits just based off of their social media <laughs> at this point. Like, just uh, we seeing what you guys are doing with your social media and how, you know, how, uh, how many people are viewing and all that stuff. And we're just getting kids off of that, you know, having a pro day and, doing things like that. I don't even know if we had a Midnight Madness this year. Did we have a Midnight Madness? If anybody can speak to it. Um, no, so, no, yeah, so it, it, Because of COVID protocols on campus still, they didn't have a Midnight Madness this year. Yeah, we could have live streamed it though and let fans, you know, get some virtual tickets to the, you know, to the, to, 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 to witness what's going on here. It, it's, it's been, other, it's other ways that we could have got around it. Um, and that's something that I would have just liked to see as an as alumni. I just would like to see what's going on, how these guys are moving, what, what's, what's, what's coming about. Um, but, you know, that's just something, it's just something that I think is important for us to really, really uh, hone in on and trying to update just our style, just our wardrobe, you know, it's kind of played out. That's how I feel. It's really getting played out. Um, in terms of dog talk, Dog talk is a lot of work. I ain't gonna front. Dog talk is a lot of work, especially playing too and trying to keep up with people uh, uh, while while I'm overseas. Austin is trying to is trying to maneuver his way up in, in the coaches in the coaching ranks, and he's trying to uh, obviously get into uh, college basketball. I was hoping he he was really close, really close. Like at the, you know he was right there. I'm getting a, a nice job to get into. A, a major school but that that fell through so you know it's just been a lot you know it's been a lot but I've enjoyed dog talk because it's 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 giving me a chance to connect with everyone here everyone here and even more people out there so um I think the Chris, next is, step is is Austin still at, is Austin still at the mountain 
Yeah, he's still at Dematha. Okay. Yeah, he's still at Dematha. He's still at Dematha. This will be his second year at Dematha. This will be his second year at Dematha. Um, and he's made some really good contacts and some great strides in terms of his coaching. Right? He'll be in college basketball soon, you know, just because of his resume. I mean, he, he coaches at Dematha and everybody wants to get a kid from Dematha because they putting out big time players every year. So he's doing, he, he's doing well and he, his hands are full. So he kind of had to step back from Del Tuck just, just so he can focus on, you know what he wants to do. Um, me personally, I love doing it. I love doing dog talk. I think it's I think it's great to interact with people. I think it's great to kind of hear what uh, you know people's opinions um, about the program, about whatever I bring up. We had, you know, I want to start talking more about different things other than just like former players. And I really would like to talk more about what's going on today and how this is affecting our you know today's events are affecting our community, is affecting Georgetown, is affecting college basketball, this new NIL, how that's going to affect, I hope, I want to get into the NIL space as a as dog talk and 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 hopefully, you know, having some opportunities for these kids. That's that's my next big goal. Um, but yeah, and doing collabs, you know, doing collabs with Nathan, we've talked in the past of doing a collab. Uh, Gene, you know, we have some things that we, we're trying to put together. Uh, Hoya Hoop Club, this is something that we need to, you know, hopefully we can find some space for each other to, to I think it, now it's just, uh, and if we can't get it, we can't get the resources that we're hoping that we, you know, could get from the program, we are the program. And so we have the kind of the, I don't know how, what's the right word to say, we have the, I guess, obligation to to try to make it happen. We We all kind of have the same we all on the same wavelength, thinking the same way, like, yo, we need to refresh it. We need to do something to sharpen us up because we're seeing what's going on in other programs. And I think that's what happened when I made a uh, episode speaking about the Duke program and people kind of got a little pissed off with me about <laughs> what I said about Duke. But I was only speaking on the fact that I have a close friend that now is, is an assistant coach at Duke and I've watched them progress. I watched them progress and they're literally getting kids just off of the fact that their social media is booming, you know? Um, so, and I was just speaking on how they're moving and how they have their former players and staff have their former players in, in high positions associated with the program. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that we don't got to do it like Duke. We don't got to do it like Syracuse, but we can do it our way. You know, um, I think it would have been cool to do some type of, Midnight Madness with a different little, I don't know, just be creative, man. It's, that's the whole thing. We just got to get more creative. You know, I think that's the time, you know. I think that the era of Big John was was a great era and brought a lot of notoriety to our program. Um, but it's a different time now. So it calls for different, different tactics. You know, he did things in his era because that's what was called for at that time. You know, that's what was needed at that time. That was what was needed for the players, that was needed for the community, that was needed for the university. Now it's a little bit different. We got to do things a little bit different, which is needed for the players, which is needed for the community, which is needed for the for university. So I, it's not it's not that we saying we got to rewrite the book on everything, but we we got to find ways to 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 be cool again, you know? We got to find ways to be cool. We got to have people repping George Sean Brand again. And that was the thing that people were repping George Sean Brand. Now it's it's kind of like yeah, we'll put it on and we'll remember Gene Smith teams. We'll remember, you know, the time when Martin was with Zoe and Dikembe. We'll remember that, but they ain't really nobody be thinking about. That's how, that's the feeling I'm getting from the public now. It's not something that's, now everybody wants to rock Duke stuff, you know, Kentucky stuff and all that. We need to be finding ways to get our brand back to what it was where everybody was wearing a George Sean starter jacket at one point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, that's just my thoughts. That's just my thoughts. I'm probably rambling a little bit because it's late and I had a good game and I want some wine, but. No, 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 no. <laughs> the wine was down there yet because I know you I know you had a game and you just probably just got off the bus, but um, yeah, I, I think, you know, you just touched on something key, uh, which is, you know, just there's collaboration right here uh, that that we need, to, we need to talk about. We need to be able to, to activate. Um, and I, I don't want to ramble because I, I got I got super Eric Rogers there, and I'm I'm coming to you, fam. My no, okay. <laughs> but, but but I do want to piggyback on on Chris a little bit. Piggyback, such I, I do want to address some of the things he said. If you get a chance, 
Bobby Bancroft was supposed to be on, but he's running late um, on some stuff. He has a podcast called the Kente, Cor uh, Kente Corner. And he did an episode with a young lady that's also a Georgetown graduate. And I don't want to butcher her name, um, but it's Anna. She, she, she writes for Front Office Sports. Amanda um, Christovich. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you say it again, please? At? Uh, Amanda Christovich. Thank you, sir. Um, and the deal is she talked about the Georgetown program and NIL and how if you think about Georgetown in certain ways, it's not so much dissimilar from Duke in terms of its size, in terms of, you know, the, the, their fans, their programs. Obviously, Duke is elevated in the last decade or so or however many years. Um, but she just talked about the opportunities for us to do things that for, for whatever reason, um, we're not we're not hustling that way. So I, I just, if, if you guys get a chance to, to peep that episode, peep that episode because it just talks a little, I think it's just, again, we, we don't need to be anybody but ourselves. And, and, and we have stories to tell and we have messages and they're not all rooted in the 80s or the 90s. Um, and I just think it's a matter of, of being creative and also being very intentional about our history. So with that, I want to bring in Super Eric Rogers. You're pretty much our man on the street. I was actually going to start with you in terms of the 2021 preview, a 21-22 preview, and what's your feelings, and what which players do you think we should kind of pay attention to? And then if you also want to allude to what you see in terms of kids being more aggressive in terms of branding themselves and communicating them or introducing themselves to the public. Hey, Gene, thank you. Real quick, yeah. um, I watched Chris the other night. And some of the items he spoke about uh, Duke, but he was exactly right. Duke has entire social media departments uh, geared to pushing those players and, and everything out. So regardless of you know who may have been upset about that, this is what's happening right now. Um, but he, he was exactly right when he spoke about Duke on the show the other night. I don't know if you got a chance to see it uh, on Dog Talk. Um, but a little bit about me. I'm originally from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. That's the Indian River High School, to be exact. Oh, that's wow. The home of Alonzo, yeah, that's the home of Alonzo Morning, of course. <laughs> I was a JV freshman, Alonzo senior year, so that would make Zoe about three or four years older than me. Um, and as Alonzo moved on, uh, that I followed as well. Uh, and that started my fanship with the Hoyas. Um, I was, was introduced. Coach, Bill, what, what was Bill Lasseter. Bill, Bill Lasseter. Bill Lasseter. Yeah, yeah. Bill yeah. Lasseter. Yes, sir. He's still alive and he's he's a member of my church, and I, I see him, I see him often. Tell Bill him Lasseter. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so I followed Alonzo on. Uh to Georgetown and uh, I was introduced to the Hoya Hoop Club early in JT3's tenure. Uh, and I've been around ever since, uh, traveling with the group. And um, part of my, my Twitter reach is due to the work that I do with the Seven Cities Pro-Am Summer League based here in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, and the other half of my Twitter reach is the, the GU and the Big East. Um, so I've been around for, for a little while, and uh, that started me with the Hoyas. If you could talk a little I mean, bit about yeah. being out there on, on the trail a little bit. Uh, I guess what I was wanting to pick your brain about is if I'm a kid looking at programs, um, what's intriguing about the Georgetown program? Um, versus other programs, just kind of what you're seeing as the landscape's changing. Well, it's, it's a little different now. Um, the kids of today, they, I don't want to say they don't know the history, you know, from 25, 30 years back, but it's, it's a long time. You uh, recruit who's- they don't, they don't know the history. They don't, okay, all right. I, <laughs> they don't know. They, they don't care. <laughs> right, right, right. So I guess you have to sell it. You have to sell it a different way. Um, it's like Chris said, with 
social and, and different NI, uh, the, the NIL opportunities that are available. Um, you just, you have to do everything different. You have to bring everything up to 2021 standards um, as far as recruiting, as far as the uh, athletic department. You have to, you have, we have to get caught up to date. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to Guerrero because I know, again, you might have to jet early and I, and I don't want to lose your officialness. <laughs> um, you're, you're hearing a lot and uh, just a disclaimer, Mark and I talk often. So rest assured, this is not the first time he's hearing any of this. If anything, it's probably, um, this is probably more interesting to him than the shit I'm talking about. Um, but uh, if you could just touch on what you're hearing, um, you know, and, 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 and again, we, we understand where you sit. Um, it, it's not like you're, you're making any decisions. We get that. We, we kind of know, we've been around a long, a long time. We love a program, we respect the program, we appreciate it, but what's challenging for you and what, what will be some of your takeaways um, from some of the things you've heard? Um, again, because I, I know you might have to jet soon. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, I appreciate hearing all the viewpoints. Um, you know, I follow every one of you on social media. So I, I know, you know, a lot of what you all think on a day to day basis. Obviously, I watch most every dog talk, like I watch most every Hoy locker room. Um, so I'm definitely in tune with with the, the discussions that are ongoing on, you know, both podcasts, which are, I, I agree, critically important. And I want to personally help, you know, I, Chris, you know, to your point, I, G and I and Markham and I talk a, a good bit about Hoya Locker Room and what they're doing. And I'm happy to be involved and try to help you in any way that I can as well with, with dog talk. Um, you know, in terms of one thing I wanted to mention, Chris, I don't think you heard this. It's, it's not midnight madness, but there is going to be a, a virtual preseason, a season preview that's coming up in early November um, where people will at least be able to meet the guys, you know, particularly get an introduction to the new players and whatnot. Um, not quite a midnight madness, but there is something that it's in the works um, that will be, I think it's going to be announced this week. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm if, with the Hoya Hoop Club, we're obviously trying to, you know, constantly improve what we're doing. So I appreciate, you know, all input and ideas about other things that we can do to help the program improve. Um, you know, last year we did a lot of our own virtual events. Um, there's going to be some more of those this year, but obviously we're also hoping to have in-person events, which I think will be very important for re-engaging the fan base and getting people out to games. And that's obviously a big part of what we're focused on doing is getting people to the, to the games, to support the team, to have fun around it, um, support the team financially. You know, those, those are the, the main goals of the Hoya Hoop Club to get the resources in the door. Um, I do know, you know, on the on the Duke point, I do know that they have a huge marketing department. Um, Georgetown does not just doesn't have the same resources to have that type of you know department in place. Um, that's that's really, I think, a, a critical difference. There is, I do know that I don't know how many people Duke employs, but it's a lot. Um, so you know, and Nathan, I appreciate so much what Nathan's doing and. Now that he's you know working uh, in the department, I think that's fantastic. And you know, I, I think we all need to just continue to work together to see how we can best um, help promote the program and get our brand out. I agree entirely that we do have a unique brand. I also agree that um, you know uh, recruits don't necessarily know the history of it, but you know what do we have? What do we have to offer? We have Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing's a head coach. Um, it's pretty, it's a big deal. And, you know, you see it now with Jamarco and what he's doing and what you're seeing around his game and the comments that are being made about the style that he played at Georgia and playing in an NBA system, understanding how NBA teams work. That's something, I mean, are you kidding me? Like that's huge to promote and to talk about because you have a kid now who's having some success at an early stage and it's in large part due to the fact that he played for Patrick for four years. So that's a huge thing for Patrick and the team, the staff to continue to sell. Uh, and, you know, we have a lot of talent on this team, and I think we're going to see some more guys entering the league. And as that continues to grow, 
uh, you know, that, that only feeds upon itself and helps, you know, I hope will help continue to help the program to continue to improve. Gene, if, if, Gene could, I, could I step in real quick? Of course. Um, so Mark, I to, with regards to Patrick Ewing, um, I totally agree with you. Like we, we have Patrick Ewing, he's an amazing man, a great leader. But one of my issues is the program, I, I feel like they don't really promote him that much. I feel like that's one of the, that's one of the low hanging fruits they could do better at. I mean, we don't, we don't see much. The last time the media got to talk to Patrick Ewing was in March at the tournament. We haven't heard from him in seven months. Um, and I think that's something we talk about what they can do better. Let's hear from Patrick Ewing more. I mean, whether that just be posting on social or, you know, uh, a media availability for 30 minutes, you know, once a month in the summertime, um, it's things like that that drive me crazy because I agree. Patrick Ewing is a huge selling point of this program and he's, he's done great work. Um, I would love to hear more from him, um, both as a fan and as a media member that covers the team. Um, so that's just, that's just one point I wanted to comment on. And I will add to that. Um, and I will, before I add to that, I'll touch on, I do want to give Hoy Hoop Club a shout out uh, for their hustle last year. Um, again, we're talking about some of the stuff you were doing was landmark. Like we, we hadn't done that type of stuff before. And I'd like to see that evolve to where we're hearing from players on the team. Um, that, that, that would be dope. Um, because again, it seems like we have some characters that have something to say. Like I'm looking forward to seeing Ryan Matumbo's step back or whatever he posted today. I'm looking forward to see, I got, I put the eyes emoji. I even put an emoji. I'm looking forward to seeing that in the game, not in practice, but, but in the game. So I say all that to say that the goal of this show is not only to give our observations, but to, you know, to, to give, uh, it, it's not even about suggestions. It's about like, we're sitting around at the family table and we're just chopping it up and ideas come out. Well, well, Gene, Gene, you, you talk about uh, Ryan Mutombo's step back. Uh, so I think that's a great uh, entry. Like, I'm, I'm curious, uh, given the new guys coming in, given what we accomplished last year, uh, what do people here think as far as uh, what's going to happen this season? Uh, going into the, especially getting into the Big East, uh, but what are your expectations uh, for this upcoming season? Uh, we had a great recruiting class. Uh, just wondering what you guys have to say about that. I'll start. I'll start. Um, you gotta pick somebody. <laughs> yeah, I'll start. Um, honestly, I don't know what to expect. I expect us to try to build off of last season. I think we laid a great foundation um winning the big east but it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of question marks for me i don't know you know losing big q um that kid trey king not being available i think that hurt uh so you know it's it's we're gonna have we're gonna have to have some new characters step up uh i think that's that's what i'm really interested in seeing and it's going to be, it's got to be something, I, and I like the way the schedule is set up where we don't have to play, like, I, when I was in school, we played, every year, we played, like, the toughest schedule in the country. We were, like, top two, three schedules in the country every year. I like the fact that they're not doing that. You know, I think that bodes well for them in terms of confidence when we get to Big East regular season play. Um, I mean, we were playing against number one picks every other weekend. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Can we just get some wins? You know what I'm saying? But so, so you I wanted to be so you wanted to be with me, Chris, when we were playing Hawaii Hilo and St. Leo's. Yeah, we'll get them wins. <laughs> yeah. So we we could be already in the tournament by the time it's Big East on. We already got 18 wins. So we need is like, dude, we playing against Memphis one night. We playing oh, whatever. But I think I think that bodes well for their confidence. Let them, you know, hopefully if we are successful in these games, I think that bodes well for them when it comes to Big East play and it gives them confidence to, to feel comfortable, you know, down the stretch and when it comes to making plays late, because we had Jamarco and Javon made big plays and we kind of spearheaded the team when it came down to the stretch of the season. 
in terms of making play. Obviously, Dante Harris was exceptional, um, but it's 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 got to be you know what I'm saying it's it's going to be having it's different characters are going to have to step up and, and assume these positions, assume the leadership position, uh, scoring position. You know, so it's it's for me. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I just hope that we use these these kind of pre Big East games to kind of set an identity of the team. We got a lot of guys that, that are new and fresh and we got to figure out how we want to play, what's our style, what we want, you know, who's going to be scoring the ball for us. We need to figure out who's going to be scoring, who's going to be defending for us. Um, you know, cause I, you know, going into the season, if we had Q, you know, and not to be the day horse, we had Q, I'd be like, yeah, I'm expecting a lot this season. You know what I mean? I'm expecting a lot. I expect that to be in the top half of the Big East top five or four in the Big East, you know. But right now, I can't really give you a clear-cut answer on where we're going to fall just because it's a lot, of, a lot of new faces. I'm hoping for the best, and I think that's why I think the right direction was setting the schedule up the way they did to give us – it can be a way for us to build momentum so when the Big East comes around, you know, we, we're ready to go and we're ready to compete at a high level. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's kind of what I think. Here's a little something from this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just, go ahead, Eric. Oh, okay. Yeah, here's a little something from this morning. Uh, Kim Palm released 2021 projections. And I'm going to run it off real quick. Nova won. UConn, Xavier, Seton Hall, St. John's, Creighton, Butler, Hoyas at number eight, Providence, Marquette, and DePaul, the bottom. I don't buy Creighton in the middle. I don't buy Creighton at six. I don't buy Butler. At seven, it's like the overhype in the middle of the Big East and underhype in the bottom tier, if you will. Um, so they have Hoyas at eight. Um, but it's better than they like had said, last year. They had his last year. Uh, absolutely. A lot of absolutely. people had his last. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think true. that it, it, it's – just like last year, it's on the people in the locker room uh, to to handle that. We uh, I, I've talked before about uh, my freshman year. Uh, I guess it was the year after Reggie and the Miracles, and people thought uh, we were going to be. Well, I should say we we didn't do as well as people thought we were going to be doing, and there was some talk near the end of the Big East season about whether or not we were going to the NIT. And we mm. had a players only meeting, no coaches. The coaches didn't uh, tell anybody to call it. We decided in the locker room, uh, or I should say uh, Ronnie and Perry uh, decided we needed a team meeting and they made it very clear that we were not going to the NIT, period. Uh, and when you have that kind of mindset from within, uh, it, the, the eighth place prediction, the last place prediction, that, that, handles, that handles itself. I, I, I remember that year very specifically, uh, even though we had a bad season, I remember Mark Tillman saying to me, uh, and it didn't happen, but I'm just telling you about his mindset. He said, well, it's fine. You know, we had a rough patch or two but we're going to win the big east tournament uh and that's it i mean that was just the expectation uh that we had yeah as we move along the panel my, the big question for me is what happens uh with our front court this year what happened the four or five what are we going to do with the four or five um that's that's my main concern Uh, I'd like some other people to jump in. Uh, Stephanie, you're still there. We haven't heard from you for a while. Um, just through all of your your posting and your your research, you know, which is for all of us, I think, is a passion. Um, what do, what are you looking forward to, or what are you seeing? Um, well, like what everyone else says, there's a lot of unknowns about this year's team. We just saw the roster three days ago, so. I mean, there's a lot of players who never played together, just like we had last year. We had a bunch of newcomers. But um, 
I think that it's just like everyone else is saying, it's up to them to prove prove these people wrong that are saying, well, we're going to finish eighth in the Big East. Like, you just have to show up, play your game, and, you know, just do what we have to do. We have a job to do, and they got to show up. Um, I think this was, you know, said a while ago, but I think the issue is, Chris said, you forgot that we won the Big East tournament. I think more people are talking about this Trey King situation and not focusing on this coming season. Like, yeah, another player is leaving the program. And I think a lot of people are focusing more on the negatives and not on building off of what we did last year. And I think that's a big issue too. It's because we have this stuff happening over and over again. It's like a broken record. And yeah, we won the Big East tournament, but what have you done for me lately? The latest thing to happen was we had a player leave the program. So before the season even started. So I think that is a big issue with us. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to the freshman Dante Harris stepping up again um, and just trying to see what they can do with, you know, limited resources again. So it's just whether or not they can step up and do what they have to do. Okay, I just want to let people know we're coming up on an hour. So if you, if you need to break out, I completely understand, um, but I want to give give it just a pause if you need to jump out. And I just want to stay with you one minute, uh, Stephanie. Um, as a representative of the, the Big East room, um, is, is there a, a player that you think most people are looking forward to more than others? Um, Rogers, uh, Super Eric touched on the front court, uh, him looking at the front court. Um, and if I could just lead the witness, um, the kid I'm interested in the most in seeing is uh, Aminu. Am I, am I saying that correctly? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kid that I'm interested in seeing the most. But it, from from a Big East uh, fan page standpoint, is there one player that is jumping out that people are looking forward to seeing the most? Jordan Riley. I think Jordan Riley has a huge upside. I've seen a lot of his um highlights and um him and Jalen Billingsley I think people aren't talking about them enough because of um the well, amount of attention about, we're not talking about anybody but just <laughs> well okay yeah I get it but um but I think there's they're gonna be the diamonds in the rough I think I think Jordan Riley is I mean, even from the videos that coach Crouch has been posting about them fooling around in the gym like the athleticism is insane to me. So um, honestly, for me, I'm most excited about Jordan Riley, Jalen Billingsley, just to see, you know, if they can live up to the hype that I've seen in their um, highlights. Uh, Abe, I'd like you to weigh in on 21-22, please. Uh, yeah, I was feeling better about the team, uh, you know, four days ago. Um, I think that, I mean, the biggest thing for me is I, I just want to see, you know, growth from the team. And this is going to be a rebuilding year. You lose Jamarco and Javon to start off with. That's a ton of production that you're going to have to make up for. Um, I felt good about Trey King taking over for um, Kudis. If he played center, if he was going to start the four, I felt good about that. And now I don't feel good about that uh, with the news from uh, earlier this week. So, I want to see roster continuity. I want to see the players on this year's team make it into the season after. Um, I think Dante is going to be the, the leader of this team, and I'm excited to see uh, what Aminu does as well. Um, I think the most interesting player for me at, at this point um, is Jalen Billingsley. Uh, I think he's been, from what I've heard, he's been one of the stars of preseason practice so far, uh, which I was surprised with. I, I didn't think he was going to be ready right away. Uh, as a freshman, it sounds like he's going to play a role in this team, uh, and especially with Trey King off the team for however however long, um, I think you're going to need some production at Billingsley, so I'm curious to see what he can do. Um, I think he brings some shot making, he brings some athleticism, and we'll see what he can do. Uh, so for me, I, you know, I, I'm not going to be focusing too much on the wins and losses. I'm more focused on the development um, of this team and the roster continuity which is a little frustrating going into year five um, of the Ewing era, but you know, it's just kind of the reality of the situation. Um, 
you know, I think Patrick's doing his best to rebuild the talent foundation of the program and uh, got off to a solid start with Denver England. And we'll, we'll see what happens for the rest of the 2022 class. But uh, yeah, you know, anything better than, you know, a ninth place finish to me would have to be considered a success. I mean, I just think the talent on this roster is, is not what it was last year and you're going to have to figure out some things. Um, you know, if they can get Trey King back mid season, perhaps, who knows? Um, I think that would go a long way, but we'll see. So that's how I feel. Thank you, sir. George. I'm, I'm expecting a lot from Dante Harris. I just want to throw that out. I'm expecting a lot from him. Shit, we, <laughs> you know, we got to, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm expecting him to use his momentum and he got to take control of this. I, I, of course I'm biased because I'm a point myself, but I think that he has to take control and really like, you know, understand they got to move to his to his to his beat and i think that will that will help because he's been through it now you know he's been through it. He's, he's he's been battle tested and he got the ball um so even more so without q without big q it's very important that he steps up this year and leads this team kind of in that joey brown kind of role you know he's gonna have to play like that he's gonna have to play like that for this team to have any type of success and he he's capable of it I think it just – that's why I think it's even more so harping on this schedule. I think this schedule will help, you know, especially him more than anybody because if he get these kids, like Stephanie said, you know, Billingsley and Jordan Riley and them flying around and feeling good, that just – that does wonders for him. You know, that does wonders for him in terms of having them go out there and just run through a brick wall for him, you know, and for the, for the squad. So I, I'm really looking forward to him just – taking the reins and really becoming, you know, a big time Georgetown point guard. Cause they be hating on us point guards. Call this shit a big I, I, I love it that the point guards stick it together. I love it. Oh yeah, I got to. I mean, cause you know, it's a big man school and whatnot. So we gotta we gotta stand together as guards. But no, I really I'm expecting a lot from him this year. I think he has the capability and Tyler Beard, I think it's gonna be he's gonna be intricate in this team as well. Um so yeah our guard play is gonna be heavy because we don't know what to expect. You know, you don't know what to expect from the bigs. Right. My bad, George. No, no, no. So, so, so look, I want to encourage I want to encourage everyone to to jump in now because um again, I, I'm conscientious of the time. I really am. Um and I don't wanna I don't wanna I want I want I want you guys to come back. Like maybe we need to do a part two real soon. But I like George and Patrick and Nathan to kind of get busy and chime in on this 21-22 season. And you know, pick just you know, just raise your hand and jump in. Um, I, yeah. Do a Chris Wright. Do a Chris Wright. Well, I'll go ahead and go. And obviously, I think um, this team is probably going to have to play a lot like Chris's senior year. It's going to have to be led by the uh, backcourt. They had Chris Austin and Jason Clark that season. Uh, Markel was coming off the bench, and it's going to have to kind of be the same situation. It's the, the success of the team is going to come down really to Dante. Yeah. Don Carey and Caden Rice, in my opinion, and how they played this season, and especially Dante, especially Dante. If if he's not good this season, it's gonna be rough. Um, he, I heard Chris say Joey Brown. He has to be more than Joey Brown because he has to score too. He really does. Um, and I, I love Joey Joey Brown. He's one of my favorite Hoyas of all time. But Joey was a he was a floor general. He was a scorer. We need Dante to put some points on the board. He around four or five assists a game. He's going to have to play 33, 34 minutes. Um, so that's where we are right now. The front court, you know, if if one of the bigs, God bless him, comes back and have has a had a senior year when he was Biggie's most improved player. If one of the freshman bigs, uh, freshman, obviously you don't really know what you're going to get from freshman. Um, so um, that, that's a mixed bag for me right now. I'm hoping they can contribute a lot. I think a lot of eyes are going to be on Aminu Muhammad because he's the most prized recruit we've probably had since uh, Moose. Um, so there will be a lot of eyes on him, but uh, you don't know. Uh, honestly, what you're going to get. So it's really going to be on the guys who've actually played college basketball before and leaning on those guys. Yeah. Um, 
I'd like to jump in here. I, I wanted to uh, bring this point up about the 2021-22 season, and it's that this this freshman class is one of the most talented that we've had, probably the probably the most talented in the Ewing era. Um, but roster continuity obviously has been somewhat of an issue. Whether the uh, whether that falls on the coaching staff or not is up for debate, in my opinion. Um, but is this class going to be like a 2011 where you have a really foundational class uh, that that sticks through it and develops and grows and makes an impact right away? Or is this class going to be like a 2014 where some where guys, guys get hurt, guys leave for different reasons? Uh, I think a lot of that, I think a lot of this season is kind of finding out what we have in this very, very talented freshman class. Um, and I do think that they will make an impact right away. And and there, I I've gotten the chance to meet some of them on on campus. They're great characters, great people, always willing to put in the work. Um, but yeah, I I want to see how this class turns out, and maybe you might have to do some uh, re-recruiting here as well. So um, we'll see how it plays out. But I think I'm I'm very optimistic for this incoming class. Great. Well. <clears throat> Uh, Mark, Mark uh, is going to have to jump off, uh, but uh, Patrick Waring, since you have been the same name as Patrick Ewing, why don't you close us out with your take on this? You've got a minute. Now, I was going to say, man, I, you know, I agree with George, man. Uh, George, George brought up Don Carey. You know, to me, Don is going to be uh, really important for this team. And um, obviously, Dante, you know, for, for several reasons, like people have mentioned. I mean, Don, you know, Dante is going to get a lot of talk, rightfully so, and people, a lot of people have eyes on him. I mean, um, Dante's got that dog in him. You know, he plays with that chip. You know, he plays Allen Iverson, you know, uh, Chris Wright. Uh, I know he was a different position, but Jabril, Trawick, you know, Dante brings that type of play to this team. He brings that type of energy and, um, so a lot's going to be on him, and he is battle tested. He played played heavy minutes last year once he was inserted into the lineup. But when I look at this young class, Aminu Muhammad, Ryan Matumbo, Riley Billingsley, Beard, you know, you're going to need some guys to help him, and 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 that's where I think a Don Carey comes in perfect. Is a guy that's played a lot of minutes, has a lot of experience, and I think he's going to be a guy that can help kind of kind of teach these guys kind of take them under his wing same thing with Caden Rice so I think these vets are going to try to have to help help with these young guys I also think Georgetown Twitter man I, I you know I love Georgetown Twitter I think we all do but I think we're going to have to be careful too with this team because there are a lot of young pieces and I think we're going to have to allow them to grow you know these first few games there may be some growing pains there may be some stuff there so I don't want to see people jump off the cliff. Oh, here we go. You know, you know how people can get, you know, the national guys, if they want to say stuff, let them talk. But I mean, I think there may be some things early in the season, you know, we, you know, and Thanksgiving, we're going to head out West. We're going to learn a lot about this team. We're going to see some stuff. So I think everybody's just going to have to be a little patient with this group. Uh, yeah, we are the big East champs, but Jamarco's with the Pistons now, you know, Javon's overseas. You know, uh, Bile is gone. You know, Wahab's gone. So there are some big pieces that left this group. So I think everybody just has to be patient with them. But one thing, um, I think coach knows what he wants out of this group. I, you know, I think this group's going to know their expectations. So I think we kind of kind of stick with them for a little bit. But I'm interested to see what happens. Yeah, real quick. I th oh, sorry, Gene. Well, go ahead, Eric. Please jump in. Yeah, uh, George mentioned uh, guys that played basketball before, and one of those guys is Caden Rice. Comes in with the, uh, you know, almost a national reputation for three point shooting. We're gonna need it. Uh, so keep your eyes on him. Um, Aiden may know more about uh, what he's doing in practice, but I think uh, on paper. He's one of the guys to watch, Caden Rice, to transfer from the Citadel. 
Yeah, I think he comes in what top. Yeah, top it's like three, top, top three, yeah. three point shooter. Right. So maybe that can give us some of that stuff, some of that firepower that we're going to miss from Jamarco, that we're going to miss from Blair. So maybe he can kind of fill in with that. Also, too, I mean, the big men, you know, let you know, let let's see what coach what coach has with uh, Igawefe coming in. Let's see if we can see some development out of Malcolm Wilson. We'll see how much and how early Mutombo might play. So I think it's a lot to look at there. So what is it? The first three games are home. And I don't want to take any game for granted. I think we've learned that too. But first three games, let's kind of see how these guys play. And then let's see what happens when they leave D.C. We certainly appreciate everybody. And, and I really, uh, my producer is, is on me to shut this down just because it's going too long. And I really want to stay. He's going to yell at me for saying this. But I really want to keep going. But I understand his point. Like, we... we we could go on all day. Um, and I, again, I, I can't thank each of you enough. Um, I actually wanted to get into some, some NIL stuff, but I may save that for another episode. Um, but I, I can't. Marco, can we get into that real quick, Mark? Can we do that for real? You know what I'm saying? Just one time for the Hoyas. We, we, this is what we'll do. All right. We will reach out to Chris Wright specifically. <laughs> we will make that happen very soon. My man. The, the, only right. thing, the only thing I want to add is, is I plan on reaching out uh, to each and every one of you on some level in terms of collaborating something. Uh, like when I think of the Big East fan, fan page on Facebook, like they're, they're the perfect barbecue for me. They got over 2,000 people all across the country. Like, like why aren't we like trying to facilitate some type of an event? And again, it's, it, it, yeah, it has to come from the university, but it's one of those things, well, well, yes, we would love to, to connect with the university, but it's just one of those things where I think we have enough within ourselves to do something. Um, I think of Hilltop Hoops. I think about, all right, I'm ready for you to invite me on to do a podcast. Like, I'm ready to, to come on and, and, and chop it up. Um, MBS Sports, I've been on there before. I'm waiting to come back. Um, Chris right now talking about merchandising opportunities. Um, but again, I guess what I'm speaking to is we need to talk amongst ourselves about how to collaborate and move this thing forward. Because I know if we start to do some things positively um, and things that generate revenue, that, that's just something we can do. So I'll leave it at that. I hate to end this way because, like I said, I can go on all day. But Markham is literally screaming at me in the personal chat. So uh, again, <laughs> Again, I want to thank you all immensely. And um, I, I, again, if I, I, I'm sure that the time was not measured out properly, but I encourage you the next time we do do this, like it's one of those things where we all just jump in and it's just like a food fight. Um, but thank you, everyone. Um, Hoya, salute. Look forward to seeing you guys in the trenches. Right. Hey, doing, thank you for having me on. Really appreciate it. Always, Thanks for coming. Always.